Hey guys, my name is Boyan and I'm going to teach you guys how to set appointments for e-commerce brands uh, if you're running an e-commerce based agency. So basically any service business that is targeting specifically e-commerce brands, whether you're selling Facebook ads, email marketing, pretty much anything. This is going to show you how to get sales calls with those brands uh, through cold email. So yeah, bit of background, I run an email marketing agency for e-commerce brands and you can find me on YouTube. Uh, I've been teaching email marketing for like two years now. I have a bit of reputation in the SMMA space as well. Um, so that's why YouTube and also Twitter is something that I'm growing right now. So if you're interested, you know, drop me a follow. Anyways, so from a high level uh, overview, overview perspective, right? Appointment setting through cold email can be broken down into four stages. Number one is your lead source, right? Where you actually get the emails from, the pro procedure for that. Number two is the outreach itself, right? How do you actually contact these brands, these founders and reach the, the decision makers via email? Number three is the actual appointment setting, right? Like once they reply as interested, once you have leads, how do you actually turn them into calls that is scheduled on your calendar so that you can actually proceed to um, close them on whatever it is that you're trying to sell. And lastly is the scheduling stage. How do you go from, yes, let's have a call to actually the call being confirmed and then uh, having really high show up rates to the actual meeting itself, right? So that's kind of like what the skill is that I'm trying to transfer onto you guys in this video. And uh, yeah, let's dive into stage number one, right? Lead sourcing. So for e-commerce brands, I honestly just recommend you buying your leads from Fiverr once you're above or between the three to 5,000 a month in revenue mark, just because it's a really cheap service to buy. And in terms of like time spent, it's just not really like a very high ROI way of spending your time in the lead sourcing stages, right? But if you're a beginner, listen up to this bit. Um, but if you're between that stage, I'll show you how to quickly buy leads. So to buy leads, I highly recommend using Fiverr instead of Upwork because people on here are generally uh, cheaper because it's a more saturated or competitive marketplace when it comes to lead sources, right? And the thing that you wanna be querying is you just wanna to go to Fiverr, search e-commerce leads, something along those lines, right? And you're gonna be presented with a whole host of uh, e-commerce lead gen people. Right. What I would recommend, I personally use one of these guys. Uh, I don't know if it's listed right here exactly, but um, I use this method right now because you know my agency is much bigger than, and it just doesn't really make sense for me to manage this in house at the moment. Um, but what I would recommend you do is you buy between 100 to 500 leads from the people over here, right? From like maybe five-ish kind of vendors, test them all out, spend about 100, 200 dollars, just uh, you know buying leads from various people to test them and then go with the best qualified uh, leads sourcer. So that's kind of like the high level overview if you are between the three to five K a month mark. But if you're a beginner, here's how you actually find uh, leads at scale, right? So first of all, you'll need to find a place to store your URLs, uh, to find store URLs, sorry. So like the actual links to e-commerce brands. There's kind of two ways to do this. There's the free way, which I'm gonna cover right now, but there's also the paid way, which is store leads. So let's go over the freeway first, right? So the freeway is myip.ms. I used this when I first started out in January 2020, and I was able to actually use this method to scale to about 12K a month until I found like a smarter way of doing it, right? So you would just go on to myip.ms, go to websites, and you wanna to go to world website database. And then in terms of the uh, hosting, right? You wanna scroll all the way down and you'll be able to see Shopify on here, uh, Shopify Inc, right? And then what's gonna happen is if you just click search, you'll see that, and obviously do a capture program, you're gonna see that there's a ton, ton of uh, websites that is hosted on Shopify. Let me just click this real quick. So you're gonna see a bunch of Shopify stores uh, URLs, right, once you hit search. I'm not sure why it's not cooperating right now. But yeah, so all of these are Shopify. However, what's gonna happen is it's gonna rank like all of these by number and the problem with this is obviously you don't want to be selling to like Kylie Cosmetics, for example, or like Gymshark, right? Because if you're a beginner starting out, most likely you're not going to be able to earn those types of contracts. So how do you actually filter by the more kind of like uh, lower tier stores? Well, you could actually filter by popularity, which they call visitors per day, which is like how much predicted traffic they think that store or that URL is specifically getting. This metric is widely inaccurate, but you know, it's still, it's gonna help you filter out, let's say 80% of the potential dropshippers out there, right? So for example, um, the ranges I believe I used to work within was like the three to 4,000 per day range. Doesn't mean they actually get that many visitors. Most of the time it's still gonna be dropshippers, but this is a good range to start in. And what you're gonna find is you're gonna have a bunch of these URLs, right? So there's no real way to kind of like, um, be quick about qualifying this, 
But what essentially you want to do is you want to visit their website, see, okay, well, this, these guys are clearly unqualified, right? But you want to do this enough times to the point where, you know, uh, you're going to be able to find, let's say, 50 URLs that are qualified. Again, you know, because this is a free method, it's a very dragged out way of doing it. So this brand looks decently qualified, right? Like they have a prop proper product, they have proper uh, value offerings. But again, these pictures are actually from, uh, they, they look like they could be from AliExpress and those types of sites. So again, that probably would make them slightly less qualified. But for example, Sugar Hill Brighton, I think this one could be semi-qualified, let's hope, right? Yes, so this looks pretty good. It's a UK store, right? They sell uh, fashion and like clothing and that sort of things. And they have a pretty good website with reviews, meaning that they're actually making sales quite frequently. And this definitely does not remind me anything about like dropshipping in general, right? So this would be a pretty good brand to reach out to. And how you would actually find their contact is first of all, you would actually store this on a, um, on a Google Sheet. I like batching this. So I always used to find like, 50 URLs and then proceed to generate the actual emails of the founders afterwards. Um, but you, could, you guys can do this one by one. So that is kind of the uh, free method of finding stores that are qualified. Now let's talk about a bit about the paid method, right? Which is going to be store leads. So store leads, I actually haven't uh, logged in myself right now because right now I'm buying leads, so I don't have a subscription to the software. But essentially what this platform allows you to do is filter by um, tech stacks, right? So for example, because I'm an email marketing agency, I would go after brands who are all, who are in need of email marketing. And because the software platform I use is Klaviyo, I would set the filters to filter by Shopify and also Klaviyo. So they would be hosted on Shopify and would have Klaviyo installed as an app, right? And the, this platform also allows you to predict the revenue of those stores. And the prediction made by store leads is going to be much, much more accurate than myip.ms. And what's going to happen is rather than needing uh, to visit, let's say, 100 um, of these URLs to find qualified leads, you might need to only visit, I don't know, 20 to find like 10 qualified URLs, right? So once that's done, what you're going to do is you're going to need to find the actual emails of the decision makers in the organization. I like to use apps like snob.io for this, right? And this is a really powerful uh, extension. It is paid, unfortunately, but you know, you're starting a business here. There's not really like uh, completely free ways to go about everything. So what you would do is essentially you need to go to their website. Once you actually have it installed, just use the uh, extension and you'll be able to find a bunch of emails. And what's going to happen is, let's say we're doing it for Sugar Hill Brighton, right? You would Google who the founder is. Uh, this is completely off the cuff, so I'm not entirely sure how to, if this is possible for the scene specifically. Okay, so Powell, right? Journey began in 22, uh, 22, uh, 2002 with Powell opening up. So I'm guessing this brand is, uh, is Powell, right? So Powell owns the brand and uh, real quick, we're just gonna do uh, this old method that I like to use, uh, which is this. So obviously because we don't have Snob, it's gonna be slightly more kind of like a manual process, but let's uh, check if we can find this person for email, right? So Powell at, and then we're just gonna copy, I'm guessing this is gonna be their email domain as well, unless they have some advanced setup, which is like a burner domain, right? Ah, as you can see, Powell at Sugar Hill Brighton is valid, meaning you can actually reach out to this. This is a valid email of the founder, right? So it's as easy as that. And you would just literally go to a Google Sheet, store it in first name, last name, uh, email address, store URL, and you're basically good to go on that front. Now, when it comes to uh, storing the leads, so right now uh, I actually have a full-time appointment setter that works with me uh, to kind of like help me write my sequences, uh, actually schedule the emails and also manage my lead sources. So I'm very much like uninvolved with this entire process now. But I'm gonna show you exactly how everything works, right? So we have a, a folder called uh, Plethora Appointment Setting. Plethora is my agency, right? And how that is structured is, this is like a list of appointments that we've booked. Uh, I believe this entire system was put in place like three weeks ago, and we've consistently been able to book appointments with the system. How this works is, I'll get a day, uh, I'll get a daily report on Slack from my appointment setter on you know what the action items were that were executed on that day was, and we would track everything holistically by campaign. Uh, so these are the two campaigns that we've sent out so far. And as you can see, you know, we've, we've sent uh, X amount of new contacts. Here's the amount of appointments we've booked. And this gives a really good idea of like what the appointment booking ratios are, whether, lead, whether the leads are working and allows us to diagnose further, right? 
So this is kind of like the reporting sheet, but how we actually store the leads is, uh, we also have like a folder with all of the sequences that we're testing right now. And basically my appointment setter writes it, I give the feedback, we edit it on call, and uh, over time it just improves, right? But here's how the leads actually work. So first of all, we have uh, leads by different categories. So this is a slightly higher level overview than what you guys, if you're a beginner with need. So for example, we have ICPs, right? So we taught, write the ICPs. This is what we actually give to um, our lead sourcing guy, right? And he would follow the ICP, which is ideal customer profile. And he would be able to then find a bunch of leads. And this is how we store it. We have company name, first name, last name, title, email address, LinkedIn contact profile, website URL, primary industry, uh, company size, this is great from LinkedIn, uh, the city that the company is based in, and uh, everything along those lines, right? So basically, how this works is he gives us the leads, and uh, if you're a beginner, you'd be doing this entire process yourself, by the way, so you would want to have a sheet sim uh, set up in a very similar fashion to this one. And uh, yeah, that's exactly how we organize our leads. So what's the actual outreach process right first of all you want to get set up on lemlist i've yet to find a better sending software in all honesty right so lemlist is the only thing that has been able to consistently keep me out of the spam folder as well as i'm just used to the interface now and i know how to train teams on it so that's kind of the software that i've stuck to uh, wherever you buy the domain i highly recommend buying your domains from g suite and using g suite emails Reason being is because most business, businesses nowadays are hosted within the G Suite ecosystem and you really want to make it as uh, easy as possible for, you know, Google obviously would probably flag uh, emails from Microsoft servers more often than they would from their own servers because obviously, you know, just like competitor, uh, Microsoft would be like a competitor, right? So first thing you need to do is have DMARC, DKIM and SPF set up. Uh, that's like a different system that you'll need. So instead of explaining live how to do that, I actually linked a YouTube video where I show you exactly how to set everything um, along those lines up. It's right here. Um, you can also find it if you just go to my YouTube channel, right? And then you just search uh, DMARC or DKIM or something. It's the first video. Um, yeah, it is what it is, right? So give that a watch. Make sure you have that set up and verify it. Um, next thing you need to do is have custom sending domains set up on Lemlist, and uh, Lemlist has a really good SOP for that custom tracking domain, right? So if you just Google this, it should be the first link, and you just want to make sure to have this set up within your Lemlist account, and you're pretty much good to go. Also, make sure your domain is warm. I think I have a warm-up procedure on my YouTube channel as well. Just search like Boyanzel, how to warm your domain, or something along those lines, and it'll be good to go. Uh, so, how do you actually conduct writing your sequences? I don't really have any templates to give you guys in this video. I have, if you want to actually see my past templates, um, there is a uh, little sneaky little down sale, I guess, at the end of this video tutorial thing. Um, you can get it, you can not get it, I don't really care. But anyways, so generally speaking, how you want to set up the sequence, and the reason why I want to teach you this setup, is to get you to write your own original sequences, because anything, and I, I literally mean anything, by the way, like, that you see on the internet is oversaturated and honestly just doesn't work, right? So how do you actually craft your email outreach messages? So email one is always the initial uh, message, the first touch point with your prospect. So you wanna make this good, right? The thing is your offer will generally sell itself um, and having good offers will always win no matter the quality of the copy. So try not to be super long form here and super like flamboyant with your words. It's literally, the best thing is to do is simple sentences that communicate your core value offering, what the outcome you can achieve for your prospect is, and that will always win because your core offering should be highly desirable, right? The next is follow-up. So follow-up is where you actually, generally speaking, get the most replies from what I've found. And the worst type of follow-up you can have is those types of emails, which is like a reply to the previous one. It's like, oh dude, I'm just bumping this up. No. It doesn't work anymore, right? It worked pretty well in 2020, but everyone in their dogs and cats is doing it nowadays. Just don't do that. How you want to structure your follow-up emails is you want to uh, iterate your, sorry, reiterate your core offering and also offer more social proof, more case studies. And if you don't have that, I would offer some very specific strategies to that industry, right? So for example, um, I know supplements, right? Every, everyone, in, every supplement brand is trying to increase their, uh, monthly recurring revenue through subscriptions and also decrease their churn on those subscriptions, right? So if I was targeting a very specific supplement demographic, I would give three or four very actionable strategies that uh, 
I'm implementing, right, for my clients on how they can decrease churn and increase subscriptions. You would want to repeat that same kind of follow-up structure a few times, but please do get creative with this because you need to really be out of the box with this shit. Otherwise, it's just not going to work, right? Because if you have the same structure, sending it to the same people, if they're not resonating with that structure, you need to kind of like pivot it and, uh, you know, maybe introduce a bit of humor, introduce a bit, a bit of brevity, have a bit more long form kind of copy, you know, really, really uh, have a bit of variety, right? That's kind of like the important thing when it comes to the actual outreach process itself. Now, where you're actually uh, gonna book the meetings, right? You're gonna need to have a good sequence, obviously, right? But the appointment setting stage is where I see most people f up. So how this kind of looks is they just replied, but how do you actually handle the replies so that you can have a high call conversion rate, right? So for example, we get about um, maybe like five to six positive replies on a daily basis. And from that, we're able to convert, uh, I don't know, like one to three meetings, depending on the day, right? How do you actually handle those replies to get people on the call? Well, the number one thing that matters the most is actually speed, right? Because warm leads die extremely fast. As soon as someone replies, if you wait even like an hour, the chances of them actually booking in goes drastically down because their impulse decreases. So your reply speed, realistically, to paint you a really good picture, needs to match a desperate 16 year old kid trying to text his crush, right? Like that is the type of mentality you need to have. With my appointment setter, I always tell her, you need to reply within five minutes or the maximum is one hour. And if you are able to set that precedent within your organization, if you do, uh, when you do actually hire an appointment setter, they will generally reply within two hours, right? So you need to make sure to have very strict deadlines for replying to, uh, with your appointment setters. The actual content of the reply just needs to address the core questions or objections presented and also progress to the call. So the, the exact words you use for this reply doesn't actually matter as much as speed. So I've, I've replied in two minutes and had spelling mistakes and still got the appointment. It doesn't really matter. You just literally, speed is everything when it comes to appointment setting, right? So just to give you an example of what this uh, structure might look like a little bit is the uh, prospect might ask, oh, so what's your pricing like before we jump on a call? Cool, so hey prospect, our retainers start from X to Y. We are the best in the game when it comes to, uh, in my case, email marketing for e-commerce e brands and we can help you achieve up to 50% in revenue generated through your email systems. Does it make sense to jump on a quick call? Insert exact time and date. Don't use calendar links anymore. Um, calendar links works really well if it's an inbound lead, but outbound leads generally want to talk to you a little bit and feel like uh, if, if you give them a link where they have to decide what times and then fill out a questionnaire, it's just like higher barriers to entry. So what I tend to find is if I just send them, hey, look, book in a call for this time, this day, does this work for you? If it doesn't, then call, we'll figure out another time. And that's kind of like the highest success rate right now for me personally. One thing that's advised against in the guru space, generally speaking, or SMMA in general, is being upfront about pricing. Uh, so most people would handle that something like the best way for me to accurately give you a good price is for us to jump on a quick call as there are some nuances within your specific niche uh, that I would need to understand before I can give you an accurate quote, right? I just don't really like wasting time nowadays because we've had so much results and so much social proof at this point where it just kind of becomes unrealistic for people to doubt our abilities, especially because if they search anything that's kind of like email marketing related on YouTube, my face would be kind of like top three. So. You know, at a certain point, you can just give out your price. And generally speaking, it doesn't actually become a barrier. It, in fact, it makes people more intrigued, right? So either our pricing is going to be really on the low end or it's going to be so high, which is like almost like a deterrent, right? So basically, I like to be very upfront with my retainers. It ranges from 2,500 all the way up to around 9.5K, right? So it's a big, big range. And I'm very able, uh, I'm very confidently able to say that we are like the best in the game when it comes to email marketing. So once they hear that, it generally kind of like, you know, they, they kind of balance it out in the head and they find it worth their time by hearing us out. If you're a beginner, I recommend going about it the second way, which is like uh, rerouting the way in which the prospect can get the answers to their questions or objections is by jumping on that quick call, right? So for example, if they give us give you another question or like a list of questions, right? Then you can reply with like, the best way for me to accurately answer your questions around XYZ is with a quick call as there are some nuances within your niche of e-commerce, what's a good time for you, right? Next, 
this is where I, again, see a lot of people make mistakes. This is where the juicy part of the video is, really. Is once they get the call in the calendar, once someone agrees, right, they take too long to accept, uh, to send the request. And what happens is, again, the lead dies, the interest gets lost. You know, you want to send that invite ASAP, right? As soon as someone replies, you want to be like, hey, here's the invite, check your calendar, confirm the booking, right? So once someone agrees on a time and date, you want to make sure to get the call in the calendar ASAP. I'm talking again in like five minutes, right? Or less. You want to make sure that they accept once you send the invite. And as well, you want to shoot them a personalized email. And I'm literally, I'm, I'm saying no templates here, right? Making it clear that number one, you're looking forward to the call, you're excited to talk to them. Number two, asking them for a reply and a confirmation that they're actually gonna show up to the right? Once they confirm, it's kind of like holding them accountable to it because if they just click accept, they might not be so accountable to it, but once they actually agree with you that they will show up on the meeting, they're much more likely to attend. So some uh, that email would look something along the lines of, hey, Dave, it's Boyan, I just sent over the invite for, our meeting on Tuesday the 25th uh, for 6 p.m. UK time. Really looking forward to sharing some strats that we can execute for your company uh, to help achieve up to 50% in revenue generated through email marketing. Um, also, I got some really cool things to share specifically for you because I saw that you guys were selling XYZ type of supplements. I actually helped one of my clients, insert brand name, achieve this. And I thought that strategy specifically would work really well for you guys. I'm really excited to be sharing that on our call also. You see how it's like hyper tailored, right? I always like to tailor it by giving a specific outcome that I can achieve for a specific brand, right? Because of their specific product and giving some case study and social proof to back it up and being like, hey, I actually helped Scott do the same and this was his brand, he sold something that was kind of adjacent or indirect competitor to you, and I think you guys would benefit drastically. And then at the end, the call to action would just be, can you just please reply to confirm that the time works for you and that you can find the meeting link? They say, yes, Boyan, looking forward to the call as well. Great, we have a call scheduled in on the calendar. And now all that's left to do is for you to jump on the call and actually close them, right? So that's basically appointment setting for e-commerce 101. Uh, if you wanna learn, from me a bit more. You can check out my YouTube channel. I teach it for free. And uh, if you want to get exact templates and what I've said in the past, I actually have an ebook. Yes, it's paid, but that's just because in 2020, I released a few templates and within 20 days, it got saturated stupidly fast. Uh, but basically, if you just click this link, you'll be able to find the uh, ebook or you can find it on my channel. It's probably linked somewhere, right? And if you don't like it, just drop me a message on Insta. I'll give you a refund. I don't really care about the 29 pounds, right? That's it, appointment setting. Check out my Twitter. I'm going really hard on Twitter at the moment and also Instagram. Uh, it's just real boy and sal for both. And um, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. See you guys next time.